What are we doing today, church? We're in our cool place, nice, comfortable chairs. We have our great jobs. Some of y'all might not think they're so great. But we have a job. How many of us have a roof over our head? How, much, how many of us came here in a car with air conditioning? Some didn't. How many of us have something in our pockets to be able to know that when we go home, there's something to eat? Go ahead and get them. How many of you came in this morning and you saw this man at the door? Come on up. Come on up. Jesus says, through Abraham... Come on up, Shannon. See, many of you saw this man at the front door as you entered your cool house. Let me see what we did here at BGI. How you doing, Shannon? So, so let's see what we got here. A whole bunch of quarters. A whole bunch of quarters. <laughs> He's not homeless. I put him here, there, to see if we would go into our nice palace and forsaken the poor man who needed our help. I must say, I am amazed because I see that you gave what you could give to get him something to eat. Have a seat right there, Shannon. Take this with you. Take this bottle, too. BGI, I'm proud of you because the first person came to me, wanted him to come on in, was concerned, wanted to give him something. Another person came through and said, we got to do something. But there are many people every day who see people on the corner, people who need help. You could be entertaining an angel and we walk right past him. And in this moment, the rich man who now is getting what he, what he made his priority, is looking and seeing Lazarus being comforted. Brothers and sisters, what do we do with our good things? Did we give our best to help this person? The word of God says, ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened. But we want that for us. But when someone else is asking, when someone else is showing a need, we always say somebody else going to get that. I see it, but somebody else going to get that. There are some folks who came in and said, well, I see him out in front of the church. Why isn't the church doing something? Why is he left out there? Why didn't the pastor, the apostle, the deacons bring this person in? The church should be doing something. Well, brothers and sisters, give me this real. The church is us. And if all we are doing is giving nickel and dimes, there's not a whole lot we can do for that man out there. We are always looking for somebody else to do it. But God is saying, I'm showing each of you the need. If I show you the need, then do what you can to help. The rich man missed his opportunity. He had multiple opportunities, and all Lazarus wanted was the crumbs from the table. He didn't even want the meal. He just wanted the, the, the bread stuff that would drop. And the scripture didn't point this out, but I can just imagine there's stuff on the floor, but folks ain't thinking about helping somebody with their leftovers, with their, with the, they throw it away. How many of us yesterday threw away some stuff? Or the day before, we had stuff, we ate a meal, and we had some left over, but we threw it away. Or we didn't want it today, so we're just going to go get Chick-fil-A. Come back to the refrigerator, and, and tomatoes, and all kind of other stuff is ruining in the refrigerator. We have a lot, but we have a mindset of being served. And here's where we are in this moment on the other side. The rich man called out to Abraham. Abraham, help me. But his mindset hadn't even changed on that side. Send Lazarus. Dip his finger in some water and, 
and cool my tongue, he was still operating in a mindset that Lazarus can come serve him to make his hell comfortable. Some of us want others and want God to bless us to make our hell comfortable. We don't want to come out of hell. He never even asked Abraham, get me out of here. He said, make my hell comfortable. And that's where many of us are at times when we're doing things in hell in the now reflects rebellion. We are rebelling. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. And when we suffer the consequences of rebellion, we say, God, bless me. God, make my hell comfortable. We're not asking God to get us out of it because we like rebellion. We just don't like what comes with it. 